All right. The next part of our coverage in cover six is the cover two side. We call our cover two side hammer. Hammer. Okay. This is a man match cover two. A man match cover two. Okay. We're going to talk about the underneath defenders and then we're going to talk about the flat defender and the half defender. Okay. My underneath defenders, so my will and my might, are going to take their men man to man up and inside. Man to man. So the will would have two up and two inside. Man to man. The mic, if the mic were on, if the, the, the three were on the hammer side, would take three up and inside man to man. Okay, this is a man match. We'll take them all the way across the field. If they go out, you're going to cut the one. So if he were to go out, he would go play man to man on the number one. Okay, he'd go play man to man on the number one. Cut is similar to robber in that I'm trying to rob inside and underneath the number one receiver. I'm going to, as that number one receiver runs vertical, I'm going to start to build a fence. So if he runs all the way down the field vertical, I'm going to build a fence about five yards away from him, three to five yards away, okay, and stay on his inside hip. And then when he drives on the slant, dig, or post, I'm going to rob it. The only difference between cut and robber is that cut is done by overhangs, whether it's strong safeties, mics, and wills, whereas robbing is done by high safeties. So robber coverage is done from the top down. Cut is done from the bottom up. But it's the same principle. Okay? My guy goes out. I'm going to build the fence. Okay? I'm going to build the fence. And if that, that guy I'm trying to cut goes in at all, he, he breaks his route off at all, I got him man to man. He's mine. Inside and underneath. Okay? Now, there's a special technique when it comes to how we play cut coverage with our cut defenders. When our player goes out, our two or three goes out, and I get my eyes to one, this is a special technique for cut. If the number one receiver is outside the corner, and we'll talk about how he plays in a second, I want to hang <laughs> on the number two receiver, okay? Because I want to close the window between the corner, okay, and the number two. Okay? If the number one receiver outside releases, I want to hang on the number two. What do I mean by hang on the number two? I want to run with that number two receiver until the number one overtakes the corner, which we'll talk about again, the corner's flat technique. His flat technique in cover two in a second. So as the corner were to sink, he'd run with them until the corner comes off to take the flat, and then he'd go cut the one. If the number one inside releases as I see him. I cut him right now. I cut him right now because it's going to be post, slant, dig. Okay? I'm trying to close the window between the flat defender and the hole on the half when I get an outside release. I'm trying to squeeze that window down. That's important for cut players and cut coverage. Okay? When we're playing hammer. Now we're going to talk about the flat defender, which is the corner. The base alignment for our corners when we first start, okay, is five, four to five yards off and one yard outside the number one. Four to five yards off, okay, outside one. It'll be one yard outside one, okay? We're going to use the first technique we call it as a, a funnel technique. A funnel technique, okay? We are going to try to get our hands on the number one receiver as he releases. If he gives me an outside release, oh, again, we're going to talk about techniques later, but we're going to get, if he gets an outside release, I'm going to try to jam him with my outside hand. I'm going to carry him vertically in the trail until the ball is thrown to the flat. The ball takes me to the flat. The ball takes me to the flat. Okay? We want to make sure we have zone eyes at the corner. We're turning inside to be able to see the quarterback. Okay? 
So when I open and hold, which again we'll talk about later, I want to make sure I can see the quarterback and I can see the number two or the number three, possible number three. We never will take the flat of somebody coming from the other side of the field. So all I care about is one, two, three on my side of the field. If they're coming from the other side of the field, I don't care about them. Because this is a man match, I would have somebody from this side running to the other side of the field. Someone from the cover force, I would be running with him. Okay? If the number one gives me an inside release, and again, we'll talk about releases and, and techniques for the corner later, but he gives me an inside release. Now, I'm going to get my hands on him, and I'm going to start to hold. And as soon as two comes out, I'm going to trap the flat right now. It's going to happen right now. Because now, the wheel is going to cut the one right now. He's running a dig, a slant, a post. He's not running an inside release vertical. And if he does, your safety has less room anyways. Okay? If two is vertical and one is short, I have to take the number one through until someone else comes to the flat. I have to take somebody through to the flat. So if the number one, two is vertical and the number one runs a shallow, I got to take them through all the way to the opposite flat. Unless I get the back on the fast three on the swing. Just like our other types of man matches, if the back is in the down, so the back checks down to the flat, the corner is going to take the number one through and the mic will take the three. He has to be fast to the flat in order for the corner to take him, to come off and take him. If he's in the down, the corner's not going to see him. He's going to be running man to man with the shallow crosser. So the mic will take him. If he's fast to the flat, the mic can go cut the one. The corner can come off and play the flat route. We always play the flat from the top down. Okay. That's corner, that's the, 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 the corner schematic concept of hammer. Okay, cover two hammer playing the flat defender. We'll talk about technique of hammer and the flat defender later. Our weak safety will align is our deep half defender. He will align 10 by 2 inside of a twins formation. Remember, that's two split receivers. At the snap of the football, he will run to 14 yards at a midpoint between the 1 and the 2. 14 yards. Now he's going to fast pedal vertically between the 1 and the 2. It's a fast pedal. I need to get out right now. i got to get depth. I'm reading off the number two. If two is out, I'm going to get my eyes to number one. If number one's release is outside the corner, I get over the number one right now. If number one's release is outside the corner, I get over the number one right now. We do this because we know it's going to be a fade or a comeback, some type of outside release. The corner is going to hang on that number one longer to close the hole, the throwing window between the safety okay in the corner he's looking to hold to be able to take away things like the comeback while the safety is looking to take away the vertical that's why the wheel will stay on the two on the out much longer okay if the number one gives an inside release when two's out I'm now gonna slow my feet down I'm gonna go from a fast pedal to a smooth pedal a fast pedal to a smooth pedal, I'm going to slow my feet down. I'm going to get ready to rob that number one receiver. Get ready to rob that number one receiver. Why? If it's an inside release, it's going to be a post, dig, or slant. I want to be able to rob it from top down. Rob it from top down. This is a man match principle. So if we get an over route by the number one receiver, an over route by the number one receiver, the weak safety has to take it all the way back across the field. He has to take it all the way back across the field. Okay? We get an over route by the number one. The, number, the weak safety has to take it all the way back across the field. It's a man-match principle. We have no one looking at the quarterback over here. We have no one looking for crossers on this side of the field. 
if 2 is vertical, I will midpoint 1 and 2. I will lean towards the number 1 because I have the wheel plane inside and underneath the inside, what we call the inside trail technique, when he's playing the vertical of 2. He will play an inside trail technique on the vertical of 2. So I want to now squeeze towards the number 1 and we will vision the quarterback like a middle field safety. We'll talk about how we midpoint later, but we're going to use the same type of 60-40 rule that the corner would in a midpoint technique. The only difference is now we're going to be 60% on the number one receiver, not the number two. Okay? We'll be on 60%, 60-40 on one, not two, when we midpoint. When we midpoint. If two is in, if two is in or two is short, so hitch, slant, under out. Now I can vision the quarterback completely. I'll become a vision the quarterback player, a true zone player. I'm going to read the eyes of the quarterback, and I'm going to be like a free deep half defender. Okay? Two's out, you need to get your eyes to one. Two's vertical, I need a midpoint one and two. Two's in. I, I can vision the quarterback completely. My eyes, okay, the route of the receiver will determine where my eyes go. My eyes are determined by the route of the receiver when I'm a deep half defender. This is what we call deep half principle. This principle is ran whether I'm playing two man, whether I'm playing hammer, whether I'm playing some other type of deep half coverage. If he's a deep half player, you use the same principles. We use the same principles, okay? We use the same principles. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is playing stacks and hammer. Stacks and hammer. Okay? If we get a stack, the corner will play outside leverage of the stack, five yards off, one yard outside the outside most man of the stack, whether it's the front guy or the back guy, outside the stack. He will now do no jam. He will not jam at all. He will not get his hands on it. All he will do is start to, in the half turn, shuffle back, seeing the one, two, and three. No jam. Okay? Shuffle back, looking at the one, two, and three. Playing the same technique. Okay, now we're just shuffling with, when we're not getting hands on. Okay, we'll talk about the technique when we talk about being a flat defender in cover two later. Okay. There are one of two calls that have to be made. First of all, the first one is where we don't make any type of call. All right, in a stack. <laughs> one of two things have to happen. The first is that if number three is to the side of the stack, okay, we don't make any call. We don't make any call. Remember what I said? I always said this is one and this is two in a stack. The two is always the back guy. So the wheel has two up and inside. He has two up and two inside. If that two goes out, he'll cut the one. Okay? If that two goes out, he'll cut the one. The mic has three up and inside. If three goes out, he'll cut the one. If three goes out, he'll cut the one. Okay? You can switch who's one and two in the stack week to week, depending on who you're seeing. The reason you don't have to do this is, for example, let's say they're running a route combination like this. Okay? They're running around a combination like that. The will is going to take the number two, who's the back guy, up and inside. He has him up. The mic has the three on the out. He's going to cut the one. It's always the original one in a man match. It's the original one, two, and three. It's the original one, two, and three because it's a man match, not a zone match. So he's going to cut the one. 
The corner is going to be the flat defender. He'll end up taking the guy to the flat. It's an inside of a release. I can trap the flat right now. Weak safety, I'm going to be a deep half defender. Weak safety, I'm going to be a deep half defender. Okay, that would be cut coverage. I'm sorry, hammer coverage versus a stack of threes to my side. If three's away, three's not to my side, we have to make a triangle call. Three's not to my side. Now the mic is on the cover four side. I have to make a triangle call. This happens between the wheel and the corner. The weak safety will also make the call, but it happens between the wheel and the corner. What this says is wheel and corner. Will, you're going to take the first in route by one and two. Corner, you're going to take the first out route. Okay? By one and two. Weak safety, you're a true deep path defender. You're going to automatically midpoint. We're not reading one and two. We are getting on a midpoint right now, vision in the quarterback. You're doing this because you're expecting guys to cross the formation. You're expecting somebody go in, somebody come out, or someone go vertical and someone come in. And so what you don't want to do is be trying to carry the verticals of two. You don't want to be carrying the verticals of two. You want to be now saying you got the first in, you got the first out, and we'll midpoint the one and the two. We'll midpoint the one and the two. So if one and two are both vertical, if one and two are both vertical, we'll midpoint it right in between. The wheel will start to make a fence. Okay? The corner will do what we call a hole technique. He will hole if one and two are both vertical. But I will not carry the one and the two down the field. First in and first out. First in and first out. That is what we call a triangle call. A triangle call versus a stack in hammer. Okay. Does not matter if the stack is tight or wide, the same rules apply. Does not matter if the stack is tight or wide, the same rules apply. If three's to my side, we don't need to make the triangle call. If three's away, I have to make the triangle call. This call is made between three guys in the triangle, the will, the corner, and the weak safety. Okay. That's how we play hammer rules. Okay. And our cover six, the cover two side of cover six.